A very beautiful day it is to you, our Christ TV viewers. Welcome to yet another exciting edition of your favorite career guidance program. Welcome to Spot On on this beautiful day. My name is Samantha Anasu Ishe, God's Flower. Now, you are going to be watching a very different unique and exciting show today as we are going to be looking at sport and to be precise we are looking at football as a profession now as you can see i got my jersey here i'm so ready for what's coming so if you don't want to miss that just be sure not to move an inch Welcome back Cross TV. You are still watching the best career guidance program across the whole of all television stations. This is Spot On and welcome to our first segment where we are now joined by our guest for today, a footballer, a superstar. I'm talking about Alois Bunjira. I'm sure you're familiar with the name. So it's going to be shading more light on how he has been uh, running this uh, football and soccer industry. Hello, sir, and welcome to Spot On. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Yeah. And thank you thank for you making yeah. time with us. Yeah, it's good to be here. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, now, uh, if you could start by telling us more about you. Who is Alois Bunjira? Um, Alois was born in, uh, in Wonder Valley okay. uh, uh, many, many years ago. Okay. <laughs> uh, and uh, we moved from, uh, from Wonder Valley when I was about uh, uh, two years old. Okay. I think that was around 1977 okay. when my parents moved to Visa, So we've been staying in Chitungiza for that time. And okay. uh, that's where I started playing football. Uh, well, for when you were... I started playing football when I was about five years old. Okay. Five years, six years old for a team called the Black Wolves. It was an area zone. Okay. An area zone team, so I was playing for the under eights. Okay. So then I graduated to the under tens. Then the team was disbanded. I later moved to a team called World Spurs under twelves. Uh, I stayed there for area zone as well. But then when the Bona League, there was a Bona League that was formed, I think it was 1987. Mm -hmm. I then moved to the Youth Stars. And from there, I went to Black Rhinos for two years. Then I joined Darren T, uh, under 16s from Darren T. That's where I got promoted to play for the first team. So I played for, uh, for Darren T, my first ever professional game for Darren T uh, in uh, 1991 when I was still doing Form 4. Mm, okay, yeah. so uh, probably we'll get deeper into that uh, in our next segment. But um, tell us what really inspired you to 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 want to pursue a soccer as a professional career and uh, if you could also tell us what a professional uh, footballer like yourself is uh i think uh for me football has been my passion i don't know where it came from because i don't have any grandfather or any uncle okay. uh, that plays soccer i think in our generation i'm actually the first okay, one to actually you. play soccer yeah mm -hmm. so i don't know where it came from okay. but i like i said i have this passion for playing football uh, from a very young age you know even in the street when i was like six seven years old uh, my, my, the, the elders in the street used to call me Georgia and okay. because I used to spend all my time okay. in the streets playing soccer. You know, we used to make, you know, the kids of today are very lucky now. They're playing these uh, nice, beautiful mm. balls and all that. Mm. We used to play what we called chikweshe. Chikweshe. Yeah, 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 we used to make our own balls, you know, bouncing ones as well, you know, with plastics and uh, wool. Okay. And uh, we played like the whole day in the street. That's where the passion uh, came from and my brothers used to take me to to the stadium. So I think that's where I grew the passion. I really wanted to be uh, to be one of those players to trot, to jog, jog onto the field, mm -hmm. and then play football in front of all the big crowds. You know, I used mm. to go and watch Cape United Dynamos. You know, mm -hmm. the crowd. You know that I I really wanted. You know, I built that ambition that I wanted to be there one day. You know, so yeah, I think uh, I was passionate about football and I just started working working towards it and uh, yeah, here we are. I yeah. went through the, the phase that I wanted to be mm -hmm. and I'm still in football. I still have passion for football. All right. So you mentioned about your family and uh, you being the first one to actually pursue football as a professional career. Tell me more about um, your family or rather the difference between you uh, choosing football and maybe your brothers or if you have sisters. Uh, tell me more about that. Yeah, I think my family was more of uh, academics. Okay. You know, uh, two of my brothers uh, graduated uh, from the UZ earlier than me, and they all wanted me to be uh, to be an academic as well. But they knew that I, I had the passion 
for football. So I, they had to push me to do to do both. Because so you, ne you never faced any challenge in relation to that, like your family wanting you to do something and you wanting to do something totally different? Um, not really totally different because they understood. Okay. Uh, they understood my passion, mm. but the beauty of it was, was that while I was playing football, I was actually the best student in class, okay. at school. Mm -hmm. So, so they did, it didn't bother them okay. because at Parents' Day, you know, prize giving day, I would be the soccer star of the year and I would be the best student. Wow. In class. Okay. So for them, they found it, it was easy for me to, to juggle both because I could, you, I could, you could, I could do both. both. Yeah, I could handle okay. both. So I went, I went through with it all the way to A level, okay. all the way to university. Mm -hmm. I was playing soccer and I had to balance the two and I did manage to balance the two. All right, but for now, uh, you said you went as further as um, A level and uh, university. Yeah. Now, like in this day, are you still balancing soccer and uh, what you probably got from the academics, or you uh, now focused on uh, soccer only? Um, I'm not. I'm focused on soccer mm. only. What I got from education, I'm actually applying it. Okay. In football, okay. it's 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 still it's it's still gelling. Mm -hmm. My knowledge, my I do my own thing. I don't need uh, a secretary to do my my planning, my drafting of sessions and all that. My powerpoints and mm -hmm. you know everything. You know, uh, I can say I'm kind of like a modern coach. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't look for somebody to do graphics for me to do what for me. I do it for myself. So in yeah. other words, you could so actually... So I use that, yeah. You, you, you mean that uh, it's also, do, would you say it's also important to actually be academically uh, active when it comes to being a coach like yourself? Yeah, I, think it, I think it's an advantage. Okay. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a big advantage because, you know, in the modern game, it's, it has become technical. Mm -hmm. You know, you use a lot of gadgets, you know, you need to be very much well faced with the, the modern trends that are happening. You need to go onto the internet, you need to find stuff, you know, and you need to copy. You know, there's a lot that you need technology for, mm -hmm. you know. So if you are educated and if you are well faced with those things, you find it very easy for yourself to uh, to to master okay. the stuff that you, that you need. That's why we also promote these youngsters that we coach here. That education and sport they go together. We want them to do it. For those that are bright at school, we want them to also uh, concentrate on education. Mm -hmm. That's why here we also try to source for those that are bright at school. You actually and have we some. source scholarships. Yeah, we okay. give scholarships to the youngsters. And uh, yeah, we do. I'm actually happy that you know the boy, the head boy. Mm -hmm. uh, for Deore, they finished writing this year. He's actually the best student at Deore High School in Mashingo, wow. but he's one of the best players here as well. Yes, he finished well. his A level this year. We gave him a scholarship from Form 1 to Form 6. Okay. So he wrote his A levels this year, and I'm sure he's going to pass as well. Okay, so maybe now let's talk about uh, who inspires you uh, in this uh, football industry, in this football career. Who inspires you? Um, when I was playing, when I was still a youngster, you know, I used to be inspired by Moses Chunga mm -hmm. and uh, later on uh, Peter Njovu. You know, I just used to want to be like them, to play like them and all that. So I was inspired by that. And uh, later on, when I, was, when I grew older, you know, I was inspired by Norman. Norman Mapesa, when he moved to Europe, I, I also wanted to, to, to move to Europe as well. You know, we played together. He was older than me, yes but I always wanted to follow in his footsteps. Okay. Uh, so he also inspired me. But now, because I'm into coaching, uh, I'm also inspired by Norman Mapesa as well, Lloyd Chitembo also, we play together. They're now coaches, they're doing well, they've won the league. You know, I also want to do that. I want to be a great coach one day. I want to win the league in Zimbabwe as well, maybe move abroad and, and coach as well. But internationally, I'm inspired by Pep, Pep Guardiola. Okay. Pep Guardiola is my... He's the uppermost coach okay. that I admire and I want to be like him one day. All right, and uh, perhaps if you could also tell us more about coaching, like uh, being different from just uh, being a, a, a soccer player, now you are into coaching. Can you briefly tell us more about that? Yeah, like I said, I've got a dream. I've got a dream to be a winner. I've got a dream to be successful in coaching. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I have said, you know, uh, with my background, with my educational background as well, it does help me. 
you know, in my research, in knowing a lot of things, keeping my own records, my videos, and editing them myself, and see exactly what I want to do, you know. I think it helps me. Um, I, I broaden my knowledge uh, through reading, through watching DVDs of other coaches, you know, like the coaches that I admire, like I said, Pep mm -hmm. Guardiola, I go and watch matches when FC Platinum play football, when Cape United play, I wanna watch. When I watch, I don't watch as a fan. I watch as a coach. I watch as a as a promising coach. I watch as an aspiring coach that wants to do. So I'll be watching, seeing how they play, mm -hmm. how they can they, they, they counter attack, how they do all this, the coaching uh, discipline. So um, it it comes from my ambition to be a good coach. So I look at the different philosophies. Then from there, I want to create my own my own philosophy from from the pieces that I get mm -hmm. from the other coaches, then I have my one, my one philosophy, yeah. All right, so uh, you mentioned something about when you started and you always got support. Uh, tell us more about that, because there are probably some people out there who are not uh, getting the support they need from their brothers and their siblings and their parents. Tell us more, was it always like that or is, is that something that you did that probably made them to support you? Yeah, I think, I think, I, I think, um, I was lucky. I was lucky in a situation whereby I was good at school mm. and at soccer. You know, mm. I, I know a lot of guys that were stopped by their parents from playing soccer. Mm. You know, in Prataka Kura, it's usually soccer and this is soccer. You know, you need to run there. You know, soccer. You know, that's such cool. But uh, having seen me grow, we they realized. You know, we have got other other soccer players, not just me, so around in, in Zimbabwe. Yeah, that perspective is wrong because look here. The kids here, let's say the kids here, they train from nine to almost like 12. And they've got the rest of the day to mm -hmm. themselves. So I don't see that three hours disturbing their schoolwork. We encourage them to go to school because I know that you can combine school and, uh, and, and, and football. You know, otherwise it keeps them fit. You know, you train, it's a healthy mind, a healthy mm -hmm. body, mm -hmm. you know. So it actually keeps them fit and it helps them interact with other kids here and all that. So I actually think it's a benefit for the parents that don't know that, you know, it's actually quite a good thing. Even if your kid is not good enough mm -hmm. in football, but for him to actually take part and run around, it keeps them healthy, it keeps them fit. So they need to let their kids go out mm -hmm. and play. Mm -hmm. And what better way to play than football? Football, you're chasing the ball around, you are training, you are exercising, you've got a fit body, a healthy mind. So I think that they should. When it comes to education, it doesn't. It doesn't affect. You know, when if your kid is going to go to school, you know, because of football, I don't think so. You know, I encourage parents to support their kids, their passion. You know, my parents, they understood that, yes, although I was good academically, I was passionate about football. Parents mm -hmm. need to support their kids in whatever. You know, in, in the scripture as well, it says that, you know, it's about your passion. Whatever you're passionate about, if you pursue it, if you pursue what you're passionate about, no matter in what field, mm -hmm. you are going to be successful. Definitely. But, yeah, but the problem here in Zimbabwe, maybe from the colonial era, we believe that you must go get education and find a job get an education, but they don't know that you can actually look after your family from money from football. Profound, yeah. profound, sir. So, I'm sorry, I will have to cut you short. We'll continue with this discussion after the break. Viewers, uh, and I, I'm, I'm learning, you know, I'm actually feeling like I should consider a bit of football. Yeah, and I do hope that aspiring soccer players, aspiring stars, you have your pens and your notebooks. It is spot on. We take a short break. We'll be right back with more Do Not Go Anywhere. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Viewers, you are still watching the Best Career Guidance Program across all television stations. And today we are looking at football as a profession. I'm still excited and I do know that uh, aspiring footballers are so, so excited. Now, earlier on, uh, he was telling us, I mean, um, Alois was telling us about how important it is to always have support. And now, sir, if we could talk about um, the achievements that you have met. Uh, what have you been doing? We, we've had stories about you. Uh, you started making headlines when you were as young as 17. Tell us more about that. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, uh, it, was, it has been a, a, a good road uh, for the wise. Uh, uh, when I was 17, I was still at uh, Prince Edward uh, mm -hmm. School. I was already uh, a winner. We won the Castle Cup. 
uh, getting kept in 4 0. I was the man of the match in that match. And wow. uh, uh, I got a call up to mm -hmm. the senior national team. Okay. Uh, while I was still at school, for me, that was a big, big achievement. You know, and to keep that year as well, I was selected as one of the 11 best players in the country. Uh, you know, the Castle Laga uh, top 11 players for the calendar. So that was a, a big achievement that came very early in my career because that was actually my first season okay. in, the, in the Super League. It was called Super League at that time, mm -hmm. you know, before it changed to the Premier Super League. Okay. So that was a big achievement and uh, getting into the national team was a big achievement as well. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we won the league when I moved to Capes United. We won the league in 1996, another big achievement. We won a lot of trophies with Capes United. If I start counting, I, I, you can, I'll, you need, can, you I'll need more fingers. I'll <laughs> okay. need more fingers here. Yeah. Well, okay. We won a lot of uh, trophies uh, between that time, 1996, 1998, mm -hmm. before I moved to, to South Africa in, uh, in 1999. Mm -hmm. I moved to South Africa. I also won a few. A few, a few uh, accolades in, in the United States of America. I was studying at Western Kentucky University. I was the freshman of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, I was also in the Sun Belt Best 11 players as well in my wow. first year at university mm -hmm. as well at Kentucky. That was, and then in South Africa, I won the uh, many uh, men of the match awards and uh, we won the uh, Coca-Cola trophy as well in South Africa with Verts. And uh, moving from Verts to Mamelo to Sundowns was also a big achievement. Sundowns is a big, big club in South Africa. So it was one of the achievements that I made. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, in the teams that you played for? Um, starting from when I started professionally, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I started playing for Darren T. That was my first professional club here in Zimbabwe. Then I moved briefly to the United States that was not professional. That's exactly why I came back quickly okay. because uh, it was college football. I can't count that. Okay. Then um, I moved to Blackpool Football Club. Mm -hmm. uh, before, after Blackpool, I went to Capes United. From Capes United, uh, I moved briefly to Slovakia. Uh, came back, then I went to South Africa. Uh, I played in South Africa for almost like 13 years. I played for Verts for six years, Verts University, I was at Verts University. Uh, then I moved to Mamelo de Sundowns. I moved back to Verts, then I moved to Jomo Cosmos. I uh, finished my career at FCAK in the first division in South Africa. Uh, so when you were playing soccer, like uh, when you were in the university, uh, how were you able to balance uh, the pressure from uh, school and the soccer as well? I think it was a well, it was a well uh, planned uh, uh, situation, especially at Western Kentucky University. We, we, we knew that we were told that soccer players, we train from one o'clock to three o'clock. Okay. So during that period, you know, we used to choose our own subjects at what time. So because it was like throughout the day until midnight, there would be classes. So you would choose your classes according to the football schedule that you had, mm -hmm. so that you know that between such a time, you are not supposed to have classes. You have to go out and play soccer. So mm -hmm. when we have games, obviously sometimes you miss a few classes and then you just have to come and make up for it. So would you say you put the same effort you put in school, uh, is it the same effort that you uh, you, you also put in soccer? <laughs> yeah, I did. I was I was. It was part, 50 /50. It was yeah. It, it it was. You know, sometimes at school it was more like you have to do it. Mm -hmm. You have to do it. Mm -hmm. It was uh, it was not really like passion. You have to do it. This is what you need to do. But when it comes to football, then that was passion. Okay. For me, then that was passion. I know that is why where I could. But when it comes to school, it was like I have to do I it. I have to do it. I have mm -hmm. to do it. But okay. soccer for me effortless. Mm. It was effortless. I just had to be out there and play football. Okay. Yeah. So what does it take for one to become a professional uh, footballer? I think it takes, uh, number one, uppermost, is passion. Passion. You, need, you have to love the game. You have to love football. You know, if you're going to be dragged to go for training, if you're going to be pushed to go for training, you are not going to make it. Even when a, you have as, the talent and all, you need Ta the passion. Talent alone is not enough. Okay. Talent. I've seen a lot of talent going by the wayside because of the lack of passion, because of the lack of drive. You know, the important things are passion, dedication, and the discipline. 
you know, discipline. the discipline comes with you coming to the training every day and coming to do exactly what you are supposed to do, respecting coaches, respecting football, and not doing things that you're not supposed to do, you know, like the drugs, the alcohol, cigarettes, you know, those kind of things. You know, you need that discipline to stay away from those things because they affect your body as you grow. Then you need that dedication to actually wake up every morning and say, I'm going to go and train. Mm. Training is not easy. It's difficult. You know, these, other, these boys, you can see they're huffing and puffing. Mm. It gets tired. The coach is shouting, makes a mm -hmm. mistake. I shout at them mm -hmm. and all that. You need dedication to stick to it. To actually no be there, no matter how. So that comes with also that, that, uh, that dedication. Then the passion to love the football, to love it. You know, you have to love it. You know, sometimes it's your, it's kind of like a calling. A calling that you were given the talent to play football. It becomes your calling. You want to play football. This is what you were given. Like we were talking of earlier that, you know, when you get the talent, this is for your benefit. This is for your living. You, in Shona, we call it, when you mm. get a talent, maybe you can, some, some get, different talents, a lot of them. Some get two talents, maybe in education and, and football. Very privileged. But Pano and one, I got to be a talent here, Bora Yoyo. That one, you know, it becomes your calling. And the talent here, you're gonna marry so you are talented in football. He knows that you are going to make a living out of it. So we follow up on that calling, follow up on that passion. So that's why we need parents to also support that. So when there's passion, you are always going to succeed if you follow diligently on your passion and you're dedicated to it. So how, lo how long could it possibly take uh, before you, you, you get into it professionally? Like yourself, you got in when you were 17. How did you know that now you had matured? Uh, Why then? <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know that I was matured. Somebody else, it took somebody else to realize that I was matured. That's okay. why these kids, when you're growing up, you don't decide that, you know, when they turn 19, I'm going to be professional. When I turn, you can set yourself a date, a time frame that, you know, it pushes you that you want to do it. But it might not be the time that you get in there because there is somebody who is monitoring your progress. You know, you need a dedicated coach. You need somebody to identify that you are really good and you have to go through the through the process. I started, like I told you, when I was under eight, under 10, under 12, under 14. You keep on graduating, under 16. Mm -hmm. I was lucky now for me, from under 16, I didn't go to, to under 18 because I jumped under 18. I was now doubling under 16 in the reserve side for, for the team because during those days, football was well structured in the country. You know, you could actually see yourself graduating. You can actually aim, you see the under 18s playing, you are playing under 16. You can actually aim, but next year I want to get promoted. I want to go to the under 18. But lucky enough, you know, sometimes it happens. You know, I, I was really, really, really good in football, you know, and I, I grew up fast in that so that I jumped. When they saw me under 16, under 18, they already could see that this is great talent. So I give credit to the people that identified, that saw that I was now mature enough to actually have the courage to take me as young as I was and throw me into the deep end and throw me with the big guys and say, you are good enough go on and play. It, it didn't start easy. I was scared. You know, sometimes as a player, I was worried. I didn't think I was ready, you know, but they, they believed I was ready. I didn't believe it. They threw me in. I was scared, make a lot of mistakes and all that, but they knew that it was part of the development. It was part of making me stronger. And within a few months, I adapted and they could tell me now, you don't have to bump into them. You don't have to go physical with them. You are good enough with the ball. Just make sure you stay away from the physical contact. Get the ball and do what you do best. So that's exactly how I modeled my game. Because I was small, I was younger. I modeled my game that I don't do physical contact. So this is the advice that you get from the people that are coaching you, that are watching you grow. So as they grow, as they grow, they also need that kind of guidance. That's where I am right now to give guidance. I've been through this. I've walked through the path. So I want to guide the kids to walk the same path that I walked as well. So that's where I am here. I'm passionate about football. I'm never going out of football. I'm a football person. I will stay in football, whether it's coaching, administration. I'll be here to guide the youngsters to also achieve some of the things that I've achieved and also to actually be better than me. Mm -hmm. I want, if I had my own way, mm -hmm. I want everybody of them that I guide 
to achieve more than that I have achieved. Wow. All right. So uh, let's talk about uh, this thing that happens when people or aspiring footballers, maybe they want to take shortcuts. From what you are saying, it has been hard work all the way. Yeah. But there are people who want to take shortcuts. And uh, we believe, uh, Kuti, uh, Suka is actually asso associated with a bit of uh, juju. <laughs> what do you say about that? Yeah, um, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'll be, I'll be very brutally honest, mm -hmm. honest with you. You know, when I, when I was still a junior, uh, we, 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 it's, 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 I don't know if it's me, it's, it's a belief in football that uh, football in clubs use juju, some players use juju as well. So when we were growing up, we used to hear about those things. You know, we actually had superstitions. When we were playing Chikwesha, remember I spoke mm -hmm. about Chikwesha. Mm -hmm. You know, we had this thing, sometimes we could actually, we had some people say, okay, so you more pass get the border go away, and all that. I, it, but okay. it, was, it was kind of like silly for us mm -hmm. to border go away. When, when we were playing Chikwesha, they one sort of six, game is game over. So three goals half time, Six goals game over. So why we thought that to get such question, to get such new perspective, get more than go away? How are we going to get to six? You know. So I don't. No I don't so that that was kind of like serious. But I think it was coming from the top because we we believe they were used. But when we we started playing, when we started playing, I'm talking for myself now. I never believed. I never believed in juju. Maybe it's because I was coming from a Christian family. Okay. I never believed in juju. But why I say that? I'm gonna be brutally honest with you. I've played for clubs that we are using the juju and they used to make us take part in some of the rituals that used to be done. Mm -hmm. I've gone through some of the some some rituals. But mentally it disturbs it's, it's it's not it's not good. You know, it destabilizes others. Because sometimes when you come there and you don't do some of the rituals, some players you can feel their confidence goes down mm -hmm. because they actually believe in this thing. So for me I actually think it comes from believing in yourself. Like when you are growing up, believing in your talent. I've been one of the best players when I was growing up from a young age. So I believed in my talent. I believe I could. If I could score goals at primary school and be the soccer star of the year without using Juju, why then should I use Juju when I'm playing in the in the top league? So for me, it's I, unnecessary. I, I, it's, it's unnecessary if mm -hmm. you've got the talent. Mm -hmm. So what I realized then is people start using, believing in this Juju when they've got limited talent. When the talent, they don't believe in their talent that much, now they believe that they can use Juju. But for me, I believe it doesn't work. Why? Because I've played for teams that use Juju. I've played for teams that does that don't use, use Juju. juju. Mm -hmm. But it, 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 I've, been, I've always been the same player. Mm -hmm. I've always done what I do best, score goals, dribble, create chances for my, for, for my teammates. It has always been like that, that thing doesn't work but believe you me there are people who believe in it so at the end of the day probably it's psychological what you believe in it's what you believe in if you believe it's working for you it does work for you but i have played against people that are using juju and managed to beat them i've used played against somebody who believes in juju managed to dribble past them score goals past them i know goalkeepers that i know that they they used to believe in juju but i used to come in and bang goals past them so I didn't understand what it is all about. So here, when I'm coaching at the academy, I actually talk about it, that it doesn't work. Mm. It's all psychological. Mm. If you believe in yourself, you can do it. You know, I yes, I've gone, you know, sometimes you play for a team, they, they would administrators that believe in it. You just go to just appease, to appease the, but you know that uh, it doesn't, you know. Uh, there was a time, there was a time, um, George, George Mbando, you know George Mbando, we played together in mm -hmm. the, in the, at, at Blackpool. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he once wrote about Juju and he spoke about us, me and him. We, we were given stuff to actually uh, go and throw on the field, but we decided, you know what? We're, we're, not, we're, not, we're, not, we're not doing it. We got the stuff, pretended like before we went out, we threw it out of the window. Wow. Said we're not doing, we're not, we're not doing this. We use yeah. clean talent. Yeah, we use talent. George wrote about it. If you follow George Mbando on Facebook, he once wrote about it mm -hmm. that me and him we we discussed this thing. We said this thing doesn't work. 
we are going to play. We you use guys, our talent. You got, you, were, you, were, you, were you never accused, though? Like, being so great, people are probably forced to believe, could you, maybe that's what you're doing. Have <laughs> you not faced that challenge yourself? <laughs> I, 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 I have heard stories. Mm. I've heard stories about, about myself that mm. I'm using, I, use, uh, I, use, I use Juju mm. uh, for scoring. Uh, I don't know where that, where that, where that came from. But uh, that's what uh, that's what people that's what people believe that I use juju. How did that make you feel? Nah, I did. I didn't. I didn't. It didn't really uh, worry me much. Some, mm. you know, some one of the stories was actually very very crazy. That uh, whenever whenever I am playing soccer, uh, my mother would be holding a black chicken, a black hen, at home. You know, I don't know who saw my mother holding a black mm. hen. You know, on the black hen. You mm. know, to be honest, my parents supported me playing football but they didn't really support you see like the mom that came here with a kid mm -hmm. my mother never went with me anywhere for football you know she never i played my whole professional career i think she watched me only twice she didn't even want to come and watch football she didn't care she said you can do your thing but they were not football fans at all like i was saying i was the first very first person to play football in the family so for them it was just jay he's playing football mm -hmm. so they never really bothered what i was doing so to yeah. hear people saying that my mother is actually taking part in those kind mm. of things, it was actually funny. So mm -hmm. I actually laughed about it, you know. Then, then came one story. This is a very, very um, interesting story about, about Juju and me. Mm -hmm. my, my brother, I bought, my, I bought a car very early. You know, okay. I, I was the first one to buy a car in my family. I was, I was 21 mm. when I was playing for Caps United, you know. So uh, my brother, when they were going for a funeral, uh, Kumusha. Okay. Again, for a funeral, Kumusha. So they, they borrowed my car. They borrowed my car to take to go Kumusha to the funeral. I the game, so I couldn't go. So I can't do Okay. So Kumusha, um, they were given a a, 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 a chicken. Okay. Okay. Uh, now one of my ambuya, my 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 secure's uh, wife. So I got a hooku. So I guess I guess I hooku michi. I guess I hooku boots. Okay. Oh. Yes. So when they came back, when they came back, they forgot to take the the, the uhu out. Out. The okay. Uhu out. So now, in any mind, just sometime when I I was going to training there by Railton at Cape United, I didn't know that there was a uhu in the in the boots. In the boots. So when I arrived, you know, sometimes the fans come and say, Ah, oh, yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So me, I'm trying I'm now. Went after taking, I was like, you know what? There are a lot of people here. I can't leave my bag inside the inside the car let me put it in the boot in the boot now i open the boots what comes up bro, bro, bro. <laughs> you oh know, my. Like, uh, oh wait, my you know so but it was a funny story but i mm -hmm. just take it up machine and uh and uh, no man we can get over and all that so yeah those are kind of the things people believe too much in juju that they can actually look for anything suspicious to actually believe that somebody is using juju you know you can see somebody with a dirty short they think that maybe they smeared the dirt the short with the with juju that's why it's dirty <laughs> we, we used to do it mm. but uh for me it doesn't it okay. doesn't work all right so to wrap up this segment would you say of course you said uh it didn't work for you we were talking about these charms uh juju yeah. uh and you said it did not work for you that wasn't the, the plan but would you say you have people that you can actually point and say it worked for them are there such people that you know uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know. I know, like I said, that I know that there were guys in club that were using it, and mm -hmm. some got successful. But let, I'll be honest with you, I don't think it was the juju that worked for them. Okay. It was still their talent, the talent that worked for them. They could have believed psychologically; it could have helped them that they believed that it was working. So they would put much more effort and thinking that the juju is working. But I can stand up here and say that it wasn't the juju; it was their talent that was doing the work, but they just didn't know mm -hmm. that it was their talent that made them successful. Okay, interesting stories there that we are hearing from Alois. I'm sure you guys are learning a lot. Uh, it has been the second segment of uh, Spot On. Join us shortly as we get to discuss more in our third and final segment. But according to him though, he's just saying it's all about talent and talent has got to come clean. Join us shortly. Welcome 
Welcome back, Christ TV viewers. You are still watching Spot On, and we still have Alois. Uh, he is sharing with us on how one can actually become a professional footballer. Now, sir, would you encourage uh, anyone, any guy, any lady to take a uh, soccer or rather football as a profession? Yeah, of course. I I took it. I took it, and I've got no regrets. You know, uh, like I said earlier, it's about your talent. If you are talented, then I can. You know, if I can see that you are not talented enough to go all the way to be a professional footballer, I obviously won't encourage it. I will ask you to go and do stuff that you are talented in. You know, you don't, it's not like I love fo football and I just go and play football. You don't force it. You know, if you are not talented and if you don't have the passion that goes with the talent together. I wouldn't, I wouldn't encourage somebody that I can actually see that they don't have the prospects to make it big in football. That I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do. Then I would, I would encourage them to do, to pursue something, to identify something, pursue something that you are talented in, that you will never go wrong. Like I said, if you pursue something that you are talented in, passionately, you will not go wrong. But if you do chase somebody, if you want to play football, because you can see Alois is flossing because he's playing football, he's doing well, and you also want to play football. But you are talented in hockey. You abandon hockey and say, I'm hockey, I'm going to soccer, I'm going to and then I'm going to soccer. And yet you are not talented in football. I don't encourage that because you won't go anywhere. You will hit a brick wall. You won't because you are not talented in that. Pursue something that you are talented in. Even if it doesn't have money, if you think it doesn't have money, there is somewhere around that talent that you're gonna make it big. There's somewhere, God always has a way to make your talent, make you a success. So if you pursue it, if you pursue it passionately, somewhere around it, there will be stepping stones that are going to be created for you to make it in what you're talented. So I support those that I know that they're talented in football, I push them because I know that they can make it. But what I always do is to tell these kids because sometimes the brain is, common, it's universal. You need to get an education. You need to get an education, whether it's academics or it's a vocational, you know, you need to get something. Because why? Because we know that soccer by 35 years old, you are done with soccer. Not everybody is going to be a coach. Not everybody is going to be a football administrator. You might want to branch into something else. So there is something else that you can do outside of football. But football, what it does is it gives you a platform. It gives you 10 steps ahead, to be honest. You know, um, let's say, I want to give you an example of Tawiyam Rewa. He is a doctor. He is a doctor. He pursued football and education. Now, when he graduated as a doctor, what did Tawiyam Rewa do? He put his degree aside mm -hmm. and pursued football. That was his passion. And football, when you are playing it at the highest level, it gives you a lot of money. It gives you a lot of money. It gives you a chance to buy a house. It gives you a, a chance to buy a car. Whereas the junior doctors are still struggling to, to put money together, to buy, to buy a house, to do what. He got it quickly. He got it quickly. But now he has finished football. When he gets back into his profession, he is ahead of, of his peers because he has got all the basics of life. So with his career now, Anutangira Bamberi, with his career. So that's what I encourage the, the, the boys as well. Because soccer can give you so much in a short time. Make hay while the sun shines. Mm -hmm. Do what you gotta do, mm -hmm. you know? And then by the time your other peers are now making money to get to buy a house, you already have a house. You already have a car. So you can move on with your life, walk to the sun machine. The, 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 the income that you are getting from your other profession after football. So we always encourage them to know that they need an education, they need to plan for that life after football, so that by the time they finish playing football, their life is sorted, the basics, the foundation mm -hmm. is sorted so that they can move on with their life. So without in other words, you're saying it's very important to invest? Yes. Okay. Yes, it's very, very important to invest. You know, a lot of people, they might think that investing is about buying a house. Investing is about starting a business. You know, sometimes if you invest that way, you know, you need financial advisors. You can, you can, you can, you can invest in a business. If you are not a business person, you will go broke. Mm -hmm. 
mm. because you mismanage the business and go broke. What I can advise, yes, a house is a must for anybody investing in a house, even if it's two, three houses, if you can, invest in that because those ones, the value doesn't depreciate, you can still get, but not in cars. In cars, you can have an accident, boom, it's gone. It can be stolen, it's gone. Maybe it's not insured. Here in Zimbabwe, we don't really insure uh, cars here, you know. So I, do, I don't really uh, think that it's, it's good investment. But the best investment that one can give themselves is to capacitate themselves, to give them capacity here, the brain. Give yourself a chance to think, you know, invest in your education. Like I said, invest in something that you can actually do to make money continuously when you retire from football. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can, like I was giving you an example, you do business and you don't have the brain for the business. So if you know that you want to be a businessman, go to a business school. Use that money that you are making while you are playing soccer mm -hmm. to go to your business school because you already know that you want to be a businessman. So do the do accounting, do a business, a business, a business course, do an administration course like an MBA if you can, so that you can manage your business when you stop playing football. Perfect. So you can't just be a businessman when you don't have a business background, you don't have a business platform to do it. So that's the investment that I can encourage people. Know what you want to do after football. Put a best for it while you are still playing. If you want to be a coach, start making, doing the soccer coaching courses now. So that when you retire, you're already so. qualified. If you want to be a businessman, there is an MBA, there is a, a business courses. Do them now. Invest in that. I think for me, that is the best investment. Because the other investment, people can actually say, Wakatengechi, Wakasweta, say, yes, you can do that. But the best investment is when you lose those things, can you be able to, to get up again? And you, can, you only need your brain and your skills that you are trained to do that. Let's say, a, dog, let's say a, a, a mechanic, you are a mechanic. You know, you can lose your houses, you can lose anything, but you can still go into the field and start fixing cars. You can still work. But if you just had money and you say you invest the money and you didn't invest in yourself as a person, you can lose those things, but to get up, it's going to be very difficult very for you to difficult. get up again. Mm -hmm. So if you invest in yourself, you are guaranteed that they can strip you of everything but you can still go on. You can still go and find a job. You can still do your own thing. You can still work and get money. So that's the kind of investment that I always tell people. Invest in yourself. Invest in things that are not perishable. Invest in things that cannot be destroyed. And what cannot be destroyed is yourself. Mm -hmm. Invest in yourself. Give yourself the capacity to always get up and do something that can never be destroyed. So it can always be here. Give yourself the skills. Invest in skills. Mm -hmm, which is very profound. So, sir, uh, with the firm uh, that comes through the football, uh, we have a lot of youngsters that are losing it. It's now being associated with uh, women, I mean, them womanizing and also drugs. Uh, from your perspective, how can one handle pressure and firm? Uh, I think the, the best way is always to keep your feet to keep your feet on the ground, you know, sometimes uh, my coach, uh, Grabowski, Wisla Grabowski, gave us this uh, very important phrase that, you know, there are times when you need to put uh, wood before brain, you know, like your eyes, your, your senses, put wood before it so that some of the things, they don't, they don't get processed in your, in, in, in your head. So once you stay, you stay focused, it's all about focusing. That's why you need the wood, you need the blinkers to actually say, you know what, they can talk about me as much as they want, as much as they can, but what I want is that price. I want to go that way. So that's what one needs to be focused, to stay focused in what you want to achieve. That's where the passion, the dedication and the discipline. Remember, I spoke about the discipline. Mm -hmm. Women, it's about discipline. You need to discipline yourself. I speak to the, to the boys at the academy all the time that, you know, if you want to go haywire, women, uh, you see, what happens when you are choosing a partner as a footballer, I always tell them as well, that if you see while you are still the junior player right now, and if you see a girl that when you are supposed to go to training, and she will tell you, ah, no, I went to training, so you want to leave me alone. Mm. If you have a girl like that, I've told them bluntly, I was brutally honest. If you have a girl that do that, drop that girl. She is not for you. 
a girl that is for you will support your passion, will support what you are doing. A girl that will say, oh, you're going to training, I want to come and watch. Oh, you're going to training. Okay, you're going to training. Ah, you're going to training. Why are you going to training? Why are you here? Why aren't you going to training? That particular girl is your girl. If you see the one that wants to take you away from your passion, it's not. And mind you, the problem is a lot of these guys, they fall prey to those particular ones. Mm. That take them away from their passion. Mm. That's why they go away. So they need to be aware. Guys need to be aware of the girl that is going to support your passion. The girl that is going to support your passion, it means they care about you. You know, they will help. We talk about investment. Those are the very people that will take, who care about your investment. They will see good ways. Why it ain't marry you? A girl as soon as you go to attend a imbaire, end up copy. What thing is she? What investor? Because what you can do? Score. We can't even advise you to educate yourself, go for courses and all that. It's not. But a lot of them, they fall prey to those ones that want to take them to the nightclubs, that want to take them to to my gigs and all that. And yeah, they fall prey to the being probably they are beautiful, you know. Yeah, they, it's it's very it's very it's it's, it's very it, uh, it happens, you know. When you get popular, all the pretty girls and you know, yeah, I agree, they they will come. But it, it it has to be here. You have to be mentally strong to actually focus and see who is genuine, who is not. Because if you go with the one who is genuine, they will destroy you. They will make you do things that you are not supposed to be to, to be doing. But if you master, like I was saying now to picture that one that can actually tell you that this is what you need to do. I think that would be help. That would be good. For okay. the youngsters, for the youngsters, I think it's good to get married early. Okay. I think it's actually quite good to get married, to, to marry early. I think it, 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 it stabilizes you. It keeps, it, 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 it keeps you stay focused. And even those other girls that are outside, when they see that you're married and you, they, they want some of them won't pursue mm -hmm. you know it actually protects you as well from 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 the outside world once you get married and you settled and your parents and you know you, the respect that you get when you get married the parents of the wife the parents of the of the of, of your parents they come together they, they start supporting you obviously when you get married your parents will start supporting you your family. Mm -hmm. So it also helps now you have got two families that are coming together to actually support you in your career mm -hmm. as well. Because once I'm, I'm a soccer player, I'm married, I'm married to you, your own family starts supporting my career as well. So it's, it, it also helps. So I think getting married early can also do the trick for the, for, for the youngsters. As for drugs, you know, they just need to stay away from them. Drugs and alcohol are very dangerous. Uh, so, say, do you think there's a particular type of friends that I need to have uh, in order to be uh a successful professional footballer and if so what kind of friends do i need to surround myself with yeah i think it um it, it comes to almost the same as with girls you know when you're choosing a girl it's the same with a friend a friend that will tell you to go away from football when you're supposed to go to training is not a good friend at all a friend doesn't necessarily have to be the one that also plays soccer you can actually have a friend that doesn't play soccer but support you in football, you know, sometimes you also can have a friend that can actually help you uh, with the other side. Like I told you that, like I said, about your education and all that, you can actually have a friend that does that. You, you need connections while you're playing football. Like I'm coming back to the fame. When you're famous, that actually, that's actually the time to, to solidify connections, to build relationships with other people in other spheres so that by the time you stop playing football, you have got a circle of friends that can actually boost whatever you, you want to do. So you'll be focused. You choose friends according to what you want to do. You can actually tell that this friend can help me in such a way. This friend is influential in such a way, can influence my life going that way. So you, you, you should use your mind and, uh, and your brain to actually pick, could I know, if I want to do this, if I want to stay focused in this, this friend is the right person for me. This one can boost me this way, this can, you know, I don't have it all. They are friends that uh, have got other qualities that I'm, I need to support me. So those are the kind of friends that you surround yourself with. With the girls, it's the same as with the friends. Choose the ones that promote what you're focused on. All right, thank you very much, sir. Now, it is about time where we get to get into the field and get to find out, which is not Fampa say with this baby. Let's get to find out shortly.
viewers we have had an amazing time an entertaining time an epic time as we got to find out more on how people are actually trained to become footballers like myself i'm sure you got to watch your presenter do some sort of football stuff <laughs> and you could actually say i could be the next female superstar you know you never know where it leads uh so say for those who'd want to get in touch with you could you give us your contact details or where you are found yeah, we are here at uh, Dev Livingstone uh, Primary School, Livingstone Avenue here in town. But for those that want to call uh, and find out about, uh, about the academy, it's Alban Soccer Academy um, on uh, 0773-417-779. Let me just repeat again, 0773-417-779. Uh, like I said, we are here at Dev Livingstone Primary School. Okay, so that was it, viewers. And in case you missed those details, just be sure to get in touch with us, the Spot On team, uh, through the details that are showing on your screens right now. Uh, unfortunately, I have to love you but leave you at the same time. It has been fun. It has been exciting. Man, this is probably my favorite because I got to do some sort of soccer things there. But hey, we still have more time. There are still more episodes coming. Let's meet again for our next spot on edition. Next time, same time, same place. Until then, goodbye and take care.